And just like that, from one new car over there to a different new car that I actually, if you go back in time, purchased before that one. Me and my dad uh, went to, uh, or excuse me, my dad went to go look at a pair of wheels and the guy said, uh, you know, I got this in the yard and would consider selling it. Picked it up the next day. So let's talk about it a little bit. This is a 1973 Barracuda. Not a Cuda, just a Barracuda is the way it was ordered. Um, and you can tell so by the B B H in the front of the VIN. And for any of you that read VINs and tags, you also notice it was a 318 car. Fairly plain car, nothing, nothing like over the top about it, but it is a very loaded car at the same time. Was a 318. It now has a, what I believe I've decoded to be a 1971 340. So I'll show you that. And the engine bay is a mess just because of the wiring. The wiring is not great. But it's got a Edelbrock Performer intake, some Edelbrock valve covers, hooker headers, full dual exhaust that's really nice. Uh, it was an air conditioning car, as you can see, and it was a uh, cruise control car. Power brakes, it is disc brake, uh, power steering as well, you can see power steering down there. 26-inch uh, radiator, I believe, should say on the tag, right, right there, yeah, 26. So, really nice car. Um, and then, going to the interior, the interior is a little bit of a mess because they took the seats out. Sneaky in the quarter window here. Bucket seat, console, floors are super solid. This is a California car. Um, and you know, you hear people say it's a California car lot, but this is a legitimate, real, you know, California car. It was in California until this spring. So a guy from California moved here this spring and ended up selling it to a guy that just didn't think he was ever going to get around to it. And that's where we got it. So, now you're looking at the quarters and you're thinking, well, that doesn't look very much like a California car. It looks a little bit rough. It is. The quarters are bad. I don't know why. I haven't, I haven't got an explanation as to why the quarters are bad as far as just what I'm looking at. Because the trunk pan is perfect. Except for where somebody cut a small hole for a fuel pump. The the doors, the fenders, the hood, the floors are perfect. Obviously, there's the hole for the drain plug there, but there's no holes. There might be maybe a couple pinholes after you clean it out, but it is extremely nice. Bottom lips of the doors, perfect. So, it's an extremely nice car. Um, the underside of the car is even better. Uh, it, the frame rails and everything are probably top two, top three nicest cars I've ever seen. So, that's definitely a, a good bonus to the car. So, moving around the other side of the car, same sort of thing. Um, it's got its dents, it's got its dings and stuff. This quarter panel's not as bad, but still same situation over here. This was originally petty blue. Somebody repainted it this kind of darker bluish purple color. And it was a white vinyl top car. So that's kind of cool. And it had the white side stripe that runs along the side of the body. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can on this side, but I know in some areas you can actually see, yeah, there's little remnants of the tape stripe. But... And then again, there's super nice floors. There's the original Petty Blue. This is all the original black interior. And it's extremely nice underneath. But so into the engine, into the engine bay. Like I said, I believe I've decoded this to a 1971 340. So that's a major upgrade. Really big deal. Um, and beyond that, 
the the guy said he believed that the engine had been modified and built up a little bit as you can tell by the headers and it has a performer uh 318 340 intake um so the situation with the engine is i put a brand new distributor in it on the back as you can see i put a new chrome ignition box on it um and it it, it will run it has carburetor issues I need to get a carburetor figured out. It has carburetor issues, like I said. Um, it has an electric fuel pump that is having problems. So I don't know. I don't know much about electric fuel pumps, and I'm really not good about that kind of stuff. But there's a a red hot wire here that runs directly from it, and you can hear it humming in the back when you when you put it on the battery. But uh, uh, it probably just needs a mechanical fuel pump put back on and throw all that electric crap away. But that's just my opinion. Um, it has a fuel pressure regulator right on the fender right in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And it will run. The transmission works. I know the transmission works because I did get it running and had the back end lifted off the ground and didn't even realize I started it when it was actually in gear because I just had it kind of hot wired because the wiring needs some attention. But it's a 200 hour engine bay wiring harness away from being that much better. And I believe the timing chain is skipped one or maybe two teeth because I have to back the timing way, way, way off aggressively to get it to run. And then there's carburetor issues on top of that. But I believe it's a very healthy engine. It's a very strong engine from everything that I've seen. So uh, might might tinker around with this. Might see this on the channel a little bit. But also very seriously considering uh, selling. So this won't be this won't be any uh, any five thousand dollar barn find. It's it's that that doesn't happen. That's not. Not something that you're going to get from me. I'll be straightforward and honest with you. You know, it is it is e-body at the end of the day, and the e-body stuff is absolutely insane. And I do want to get close to fair value for it. So, that being said, if you're interested in it, or if you know somebody that might want to know more about it, or whatever the case may be, my email and a bunch of other ways to contact me is in the description of the video. Um... Not really something I necessarily need to sell, but it's a really, really, really solid, great start for a project car, for a fixer-upper thing, for if somebody wanted to go ahead and uh, do the timing chain and other stuff, and do the wiring, and do a couple other things to get it running and get it going, and uh, bring it back to life as is, or tear it all down and start over, you know? Um, I'm going to continue to work on the car as if it's not for sale. That being said, in the next uh, couple days, if, if nothing happens with it, I will be uh, tearing the front apart and doing the timing chain. So if, if that happens, you know, we'll, we'll uh, try to record and see what goes as far as that. But as of, as of right now, it's not publicly listed for sale, but I would sell. Um... Price, you know, being it's as solid as it is, looking at some other prices online based on other things that I know for dealing with nothing but Mopars the last four years and dealing with nothing but, you know, these cars, as you can see, for the last few years, um, it'd have to be in the teens to take it away. It's, uh, it's located in kind of south central Minnesota, Farmington, Minnesota. Um, I would consider delivering it for for a fee if somebody wanted to uh, wanted to have it delivered. I can definitely consider doing that. So but anyways, um, leave it at that. Quick little rundown of the car. Quick little, you know, maybe it's for sale, maybe it's not for anybody that's looking for a project. But if you need anything from me, my contacts are in the description of the video but i'll leave it at that please consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you in the next one